Aloha, good morning. I'm Dr. Noah Lincoln, and today we're going to be talking about breadfruit nutrient management. First, we'll talk briefly about outcomes. So why fertilize? One, obviously, is yield. And that's kind of the core one that if we increase the nutrient management of the trees, we're going to get a higher yield. Another big one is Ulu is really plagued by fruit drop, abortion of fruit. And so basically, that's still kind of increasing your yields, right? Reducing your losses. And that also relates to just general tree health and resilience. So when you look at things like diseases, plant pests, just like us, right? If you're already compromised, you're more susceptible to other diseases. So, you know, the healthier you can keep them um, in terms of their nutrient profile, if everything's firing in the tree, it's got everything it needs, it can resist these fungal pathogens and stuff when they come in better. The last one is the fruit quality. And there's really two main concepts of nutrient management. So the first is called the law of minimum. And basically what that says is whatever element is most limiting, that's what governs the growth of your plant. If you think about a standard fertilizer, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, you could give it all the nitrogen and potassium you want, pile it on there, but if phosphorus is what's limiting, all that nitrogen won't really do anything. You know, so the elements have to be balanced for what the plant needs. And if any one element is limiting, then the plant growth is limited. So striking the right balance of elements in your um, nutrient management is really important. Um, and excess of one is pretty much just wasted because the plant can't use nitrogen without the appropriate amount of phosphorus. And the other one is just a basic response curve. And that basically means that for all nutrients, um, there's a diminishing return. And this is really classic fertilizer response graph. So you could look at things like yield or growth or a whole bunch of things on the y-axis and you could look at different nutrients on the x-axis. But basically you can see when you're really low, giving a little bit more nitrogen, your chlorophyll goes way up. You give it a little bit more, it goes up. You give it a little bit more, well, it goes up, but it goes up less. And eventually you reach a saturation point where giving it more nitrogen doesn't do anything. It just levels off. There's no point in putting more nitrogen than you need because that's money out of your pocket, right? Or time or resources. And there's also potential negative impacts of, of uh, pollution and runoff and things like that. For the most part, we separate nutrients into macro and micronutrients, and that's just based on how much um, they are in demand by the plant. So your six macronutrients, generally nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, sulfur, magnesium. So if you do any sort of, of nutrient analysis on, on a plant or a leaf or a, a soil or anything, these macronutrients, you get them back in percentages. When you get into the micronutrients, iron, boron, zinc, copper, molybdenum, nickel, manganese, chlorine, if you do a report on those, they come back in parts per million. So much, much, much lower concentrations, uh, much lower demand of these micronutrients compared to macronutrients. That said, they're still essential nutrients. And by the law of minimum, if boron is limiting, even though it's only using a tiny bit of boron, if it's limiting, it's still gonna limit the growth of the plant. Of course, the nutrients play a lot of different roles in the plant, but just as a dominant role, nitrogen's generally used for growth, especially leafy growth. Nitrogen is critical in chlorophyll, so anything green on your plant has, has nitrogen in it. Phosphorus is really for metabolism and reproduction, so kind of the energy system of the plant, and especially setting and creating fruit. Potassium is really about transport, 
The ability of a plant to move nutrients and water around itself, the ability of a plant to open and close its stoma and transfer oxygen and, and carbon dioxide. Calcium is really cell growth and strength. So when you see like lesions or, you know, if your fruit brews really easily, things like that, they have weak cells. If anyone grows bananas, the nutrient profile is very similar to bananas. Relatively low nitrogen and then really, really high potassium. Pretty high calcium and magnesium demand as well. Soil fertility is kind of a balance between nutrient inputs, retention, and then losses. So your retention reduces your losses and then your inputs can be all sorts of things, but in a native environment, most of your inputs are from rock breaking down. That's for everything except nitrogen. So if you grab a chunk of basalt and you grind it up and you do an elemental analysis on it, there's no nitrogen in, in our rock. And so all nitrogen in Hawaii terrestrial environments comes from nitrogen fixation. When you sample a leaf, you really want it to be uh, sun exposed in the mid canopy area. You want the third fully open leaf. Right where it starts getting skinny, you know, we just take this off. And to do a tree, what we would ideally do is four of these from all the way around the tree. So you get the north, south, east, west sides of the tree. Take these four together, throw them together in an envelope, and then this is what you would submit for your nutrient analysis. So that transition point between your vegetative flush and your flowering fruiting is the best time of year to do it.